All right, 12.04, so we can get started. Um, so, welcome. Thanks for everyone for watching along with the Live Peer community call, streaming at crypto.livepeer.tv. And those who want to participate can jump into uh, Google Hangout, where the link is shared in the chat room. And we also record these and upload them for later viewing after the fact. Um, so I think for today's call, I'm really excited that we're going to get a, a live demo of an uh, application built by a couple of people attending the call. I won't reveal any uh, spoilers. I'll let them take it away and give the demo. And then afterwards, I think we can have a little bit of a discussion around um, kind of decentralized apps, um, decentralized video applications, and kind of what needs to exist in the, the ecosystem for them to be possible, for them to be good experiences, and for them to be disruptive compared to some of the uh, centralized alternatives. Um, so I guess I'd like to hand the call over at this point in time to Leo and Julian, and they can show us what they've built. Awesome. Hey. Yeah, go, go, go ahead, uh, Leo, because I'm actually in, uh, on the street, so it's not easy for me. And also explain the current situation with the uh, different nodes and where then. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, definitely. The, the context, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah, so we built... Um, we built uh, uh, TikTok, or sorry, Dtalk, at um, ETH Cape Town, um, and we actually ended up like winning the winning the hackathon, which was cool. Um, but basically, the idea was a few days before uh, the hackathon, TikTok, the big live streaming service, um, got shut down in India, and so like 500 million people lost access to the uh, to the platform. And so the idea was to build like a pay as you go live streaming service that um, couldn't be shut down. Um, so yeah, so we built Dtalk, and it's just that uh, pay as you go uh, live streaming. So I can give you I can give you the demo. Uh, let me just switch to the uh, present. Uh, let's see. Live demo of live streaming is always fun. Yeah, this should, this should be good. So let's see if it works. <laughs> Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Can't see it yet. Okay, here we go. There's a lot going on in my computer with the live stream and the, the call and the screen share. Let's see. Uh, okay. Share. Okay, can you see? I cannot see it yet. No, no, you need, yeah. We can't, we can't see. Can, can you share your screen or? Yeah, it's sharing now. Let me know when you can see it. It might be a little bit late. Uh, can you try, like, stop sharing and try again? Uh, sure. Let me try. Uh, stop sharing. Um, okay, let me see. I'm going to turn my video off and then I'm going to. Present. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about now, anything? No, uh, we still see still see your avatar. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, one might be quick trying to share a different window, seeing if that works, and then the yeah, let me give that a shot. Reconnecting to the hangout. Yeah, let me give that a shot. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna also try the window. Oh, the window. Let me see if that makes any difference. Um, anything? Oh, there. Yeah, here we go. Might, I think we might be in luck now. We're good. We're good. You can see. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, so can you see the? Oh, there. There we go. Yeah, you're presenting to everyone. Awesome. Um, Okay, so yeah, this is the application. You can see it, I assume? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so basically we built, yeah, pay, as I said, pay as you go live streaming. Um, and it's built with live peer uh, transcoding, obviously. Um, and then it's inside of a burner wallet to make easy onboarding and accessibility. Uh, basically, the wallet can be preloaded with funds really easily. So even if somebody's never used, uh, crypto, they can just jump in and um, and start start viewing. 
um, and then we used Raiden for the for the micro payments, um, and we used like ENS uh, for the broadcaster, as you can see here, and the um, MakerDAO query API as well for the uh, Dai, because all the payments are through Raiden with Dai. And you can see me here because I'm on a I have another computer next to it that's live streaming, um, and then it's being viewed on on through the app the, through the DAP here. Um, and then, yeah, so then we actually did a, a, a live demo of this at East Cape Town. We had an electronic artist come, um, and he played music. And um, we actually like live streamed it out to the, to the world during the event. And then he raised, I think, a, a couple hundred dollars um, through the system, which was pretty fun. Um, and yeah, like from here, our plan is to uh, build out the system more. Uh, right now, as Julian alluded to, there's some issues with the with the Raiden nodes, because we've been migrating from, like at the hackathon, it was just uh, running on our local machines. And now we're like moving to, to uh, cloud and stuff. So um, so we're making the system more solid. Um, and then also going to run some a few different events through the system. So more like live music. We might do some live sports stuff. Um, and here you can see it's, uh, it's run out of time. So like I, I haven't clicked the, the payment button. Um, and uh, yeah, another thing that could be cool with it is you could do something like um, campaign finance or anything where you like want to raise money and you have a, an audience watching and uh, getting money from the audience, you know, as the as the stream stays alive. Um, and um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much where the system's at right now. Um, and we have a we also have a more detailed recap article um, that goes through a lot of detail of the whole experience and building out the system on live peer. Um, so we can maybe we can send that like in, a, in a after or something. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's the system. That's great. I, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I'm go sure for it. Go for it on the, on the yeah. call too. Uh, so so what was what was happening there? You were you were streaming live, and what we're mm -hmm. looking at is the experience that a viewer would have, right? So this Correct. this viewer visited your URL, and then they. Um, you mentioned in the, some sort of concept of burner wallet, where it's easy to get started if even if you don't Correct. know anything about crypto. Um, and yeah. I see a ten dollar balance, and there, and I yeah, saw a button so, that you clicked to fund it. So, so what's going on? Yeah, sure. So um, obviously, this version is is fresh from the hackathon, right? So it's it's a bit it's a bit hacky still. We're we're cleaning it up. Um, but basically, what's going on? Yeah, this is the viewing experience. Um, so as the as the viewer, you see this, and you can click the button here to increase your, your balance through a Raiden micropayment. So you click the button, you, in, you increase, you make a micropayment through Raiden, and then you get more time to uh, view the stream here, right? So then the broadcaster is in a totally separate um, interface and they're um, running, you know, they're running a broadcasting node and, and um, basically they're receiving payment through Raiden for all of the people that join the stream and pay to continue viewing. Cool. How does yeah, and so this, this new viewer and this lands can, on the stream? Oh, go ahead, Julian. Well, and also this could be easily implemented into Connect if we if we move away from Raiden, or we can actually have both nodes running yeah. in a Raiden, or also in Connect. Exactly. Yeah. Like you can you can adapt the um, the burner wallet for all different uh, layer twos, and also like with regard to what you were saying. Um, Basically, it's in the burner wallet, yeah, to make to make onboarding super easy, and people can just jump in with a pre-funded wallet, you know, so they can have a few die in the wallet already. They can hop in, view the first, uh, you know, few minutes of the stream, depending on the cost per minute, and then um, then they can top it up if they want to continue watching. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Not not to dig too deep into burner wallet, but what's that mean that they have it with a few dollars already? So so they did need to acquire Dai and load it into a burner wallet, and now when they show up to the application, it means they can they can use that. So so what 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 the burner wallet enables is um, really easy onboarding. So basically, you can pre-fund it. So let's say they have no crypto, they have no crypto experience at all. You can put aside a few dollars, give somebody a wallet. Um, and it's ready to go to interact with different dApps um, with some money in it. And obviously the private key is just stored in the browser. So it's not particularly safe, but it's a really quick way to just jump into an application, 
um, and already have like some some money to do so without having to go to an exchange and go through all of that if you've never used crypto before. Yeah, and also oh, so use the so application you, and pre-fund it. Got it. Yeah, yeah so exactly. Like, it's, it's, also, it's like a promotion. Yeah, like say say you want to you want to get some people to jump into the stream. You give out some some free credit to to jump in and get going with it. And even if they you know have never used an exchange, and then if they want to keep watching, they would have to acquire some die and, and deposit. Well, they they will have or not. It depends on how you build the application. So either they have to pay to watch the stream, but maybe a broadcaster can make it free. But what you could do, you could preload those wallets to, for people to tips. So the people can actually tip the, the broadcaster if they really like the show. So sure. it depends on how you want to implement the show to the burner wallet. But basically, you can either send money to keep watching if, if you select to, like you need to pay to watch the stream. But if it's free to watch, then you can still use the preload wallet to send some tips, for example. Or you could also implement the stickers. Someone yeah. actually build a stickers functionality with NFT. You could basically add those stickers inside the wallet and then add those stickers inside the, the stream. Yeah, so depending on the type of content can affect like what kind of model the broadcaster wants as far as payment, right? Like, do they want it to be pre-funded? How much do they want to make off of it? Like how much uh, tips yeah. do they want tips? It kind of just depends on, on the, those dynamics. But the thing is like the preload burner wallet is so easy to involve people because they actually don't have to have any experience of crypto and they can still be interacting with crypto dApps or whatsoever without actually knowing that the this application has been using crypto for example yeah that's super cool i i like uh, i like the way that people could read the live stream and tip people I don't think it's going to be feasible for pay-per-view content. Unless yeah, maybe. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, a digital rights management system. Because you know, as long as people can just grab the playback URL and uh, you know um, relay that, um, the pay-per-view model just can be broken too easily from the user side. But once it's paired with a, so once the payment are paired with a DRM model, this could also be used for pay-per-view. But tipping itself is huge. I mean, this is uh, more about the community than until the uh, content creators uh, get um, um, their fair share. Yeah. Um, well, you could also have... I'm sorry, guys. I'm a bit noisy because I'm actually entering the, the Airbnb. But what you could have is like you could preload 100 burner wallet for the first 100 people that jump into the stream. So it's free to access the stream for them. But then the extra 100 people... Like, when when it's actually more than hundred people, then you have to pay, for example, like one die whatsoever, like like um, a bit of crypto. So it could be actually huge for, for example, watching football in Europe or whatsoever. So you cannot you cannot you, you cannot different business model attached to the burner. I mean, attached to this application for streaming. Absolutely, yeah. This is How this is you? really awesome. Go ahead, Philip. How are you currently hosting the live stream? Is this coming straight from a live peer node? Or, um, I mean, I guess this is a local demo not right now, right? Yeah, so so right now it's running off of a live peer node that's running on a, a laptop here at my at my flat. Um, but yeah, th this is something that could be uh, done in a variety of ways. You know, obviously if, if you had more people hitting the stream, you, it wouldn't, wouldn't work like that. Um, so yeah, this is just a demo. Well, super cool. And, and totally sufficient, you can uh, just cache from that live peer note and put a CDN in between. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is great. I, say, I think the community um, is going to be super excited about it. I mean, people are already constantly sharing it around our you know, channels and, and forums and whatnot. Um, so what can, you know, what can the live peer community do to help? I know you guys are running infrastructure and are kind of trying to attract some some stake to help fund the development. Um, what's, what other sorts of contributions are you looking for in terms of development or any other ways people can help um, kind of bring bring DTOC forward? Um, yeah, so yeah, so we've been running a transcoder and I think we're gonna be using the, the fee um, so the reward card from the transcoder to finance development of the of DTOC. And this will be uh, something very great. So um, obviously getting more uh, uh, delegation into the transcoder will help uh, us building DTOC forward, pushing DTOC forward. 
And um, and also like if we can get any partnership so we can onboard people into the application and we can probably like also use the application to live stream, for example, for any conference, that would be great. Uh, anything that can actually help in uh, build the application forward. So we get we get emails uh, a bunch from people looking to stream events and conferences and stuff. Would you guys want us to um, point them in your direction and say, "Hey, uh, D Talk would be happy to help you set this up"? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Great. Especially something where that you know pay per pay per view or pay as you watch kind of model is is good or tipping anything like that. Definitely, yeah. Cool. One thing on the um, the kind of transcode net campaign is that there's a community grant um, out right now being discussed around putting identities on the on the nodes through mm -hmm. three bucks, and we're excited for kind of the development progress on there because I think you know, putting the DTOC name or label next to the node would help people identify it, help people rally around um, kind of the mission around what you're building. Um, so, uh, you know, excited for that to, to be supported in the future. Yeah, definitely. Sounds very really good. Uh, oh, so Sorry, my internet is a bit... No problem. I was going to say we can uh, open this up for... for questions i guess one one thing i'll lead this off is through the experience of building it um what were what were some of the biggest challenges in building this and building on some of these decentralized um, protocols and, and tools um yeah i mean definitely at the hackathon there was a lot of a lot of moving parts with this you know because we had we were running the Raiden infrastructure, the live peer infrastructure. Um, we were running Ethereum node for um, for the Raiden infrastructure. So um, a lot of kind of making it all uh, come together, and there was a lot of like many challenges around around getting that all together in a, in a matter of hours. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, Julian. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, Julian? Trying to connect the, I mean, run the node on different fast. We, we might have lost Julian. Okay, I, I wasn't sure it was just me. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, well, so a lot of the managing the different, the different systems, and then now it's been um, kind of migrating all of this infrastructure to something more uh, reliable, you know, not not just running locally, but actually running off of um, cloud services. Um, can you can you get? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because I'm I'm actually on my laptop. It's easier. Um, yeah. Well, uh, can you can you guys hear him? Uh, I think he's breaking up. Yeah, I don't know if it's my connection. Well, anyway, I mean, it's a really common thing that we we always hear, right? It's it's just the nascent state of this whole ecosystem and piecing all of these components together and running different nodes and services. Exactly. Yeah. And everything is still a uh, still a pretty advanced development experience. Yeah, exactly. And and kind of mashing all that together, you know, we like because we had we had ENS, we had the the MakerDAO query API. Um, the burner wallet, the burner wallet code base was was uh, challenging, um, and yeah, and then just getting that all together into into one system. Um, so now, kind of after that, there's a lot of cleanup, a lot of building it out in a more um, stable, kind of reliable way. Uh, yep. Leopold, what do you think the Great. um like the deployment on a cloud infrastructure would look like for this app? Like what would be hosted on the mm. cloud? Um, you know, how, like, how would life here fit into that? Have you, have you thought about that? Yeah, somewhat. Um, one, one big component of it uh, that, that we're waiting for is 
well, assuming that we stick with Raiden for micropayments, um, we really need a, Ra a Raiden light client, which is something that they're very close to having. Um, I think it's. I think they said this this uh, first few weeks of May um, that they'll open source it. So we should have that soon, um, and that will because right now, obviously, but like all the nodes, the Raiden nodes are just running um, like full nodes in the cloud. Uh, or locally when we were at the hackathon, um, so we so that's one thing we definitely need is the Raiden the Raiden Light client. Um, so then so then each user will be interacting with the Light client, and then the the broadcaster would have their own uh, Raiden node, um, which could either be running locally or or in the cloud. Um, but with with regard to Live Peer, um, I think it would yeah have to be through a CDN, or it, it could just depend on what kind of a stream it is. Right? Is it a like how many viewers are they going to have? What what are they trying to stream? Um, but most likely, yes, live peer node would be in the cloud as well. Um, Raiden may may not be. It just depends on on their setup. Um, and then obviously the DAP itself is is hosted. It's actually live now. You can it's on uh, detalk.stake.capital. You can you can view it there. Cool. So so like the. The talk app itself is like, is it like a static thing that's hosted on S3 or something? Correct, correct, exactly. Right. It's it. on S3, exactly. Got it. So and it's just a, just a very simple uh, static page. And then it talks to, right now it talks to a full, um, a full Raiden node. And then, uh, you know, the, the live free stream is just running locally, but that would be in the cloud, yeah. Right. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to think, right, like, that like it makes like it would work if you were hosting like the live peer nodes in EC2 for a few streams that you can that can come in and you can like hard code the connection um like the broadcast URL to that specific node but then if you had like a hundred broadcasters you probably wouldn't be able to hard code it into a to a single node so you would either have to host multiple nodes and like manage the load balancing between those, or you need you you probably need like some kind of hosted service that that would do that for you. Um, you mean if we were hosting the broadcasts? Right, right. Yes, yeah, true. So, so that that's definitely something we have to look at because at the moment the economics of it are that we don't take any kind of fee or anything, you know, off of the the donations and the and the money that gets uh, paid to view. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have to look at that you know if 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 uh yeah. if we were needing to host a lot of content we would need to have a, a budget for that probably um but the other option is to allow people to host host this host it themselves right just keep it very light yeah like one thing that we could think about doing is you know like live here is working on a hosted api that allows developers to just like plug into that uh, so like, like we're, we're still working on the interface itself, but um, what we're thinking about is like it would allow you to like call an API and create like a broadcast channel that then gives you an ingest URL that you can share with the broadcaster. Then and then they would just stream it into a hosted infrastructure run by Live Peer, uh, and I that see. would like that would you know kind of offset the cost from but you be, to have to host all and, of that stuff. But that would be that would be pretty heavy for Live Peer to to host as well. No. Yeah. I'm sorry, I I, I didn't uh, hear your question. I mean, it will be quite heavy for you guys to host uh, all the broadcaster if we if they if there are a lot of uh, people that are trying to stream content. Yeah, I mean, it, it really just depends on you know how many people are using it. I think it'll you know what our plan is to offer this for free up to a certain number of streams. So we're thinking like a hundred streams, right? So if you yeah. have less than a hundred concurrent broadcast streams, then it will be free. Um, you know, if it's more than that, then then um, then we can we can talk about that um, later. Yeah, I mean that's definitely something that could be could be relevant to to uh, Dtalk, I think, um, for hosting you know the broadcaster streams, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would certainly make things a little easier, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Um, and currently, you couldn't and really onboard a lot of users. Our architecture wouldn't really be able to handle it. The um, old design that's running since a year now uh, wasn't designed for heavy load. And the version 2 that we are currently creating is what we run in our test lab. And we already run it at scale with 100 streams and are getting more and more confident that we can run this out soon. And so is that, is that, is that a, a light client of LivePeer? Like, how heavy is it to run the node? Um, yeah, the node is it's Streamflow, right? Yeah. Streamflow, right. Uh, it's uh, less heavy because we um, basically put uh, the left media server into three parts, into okay. an ingest node, and type a load balancer, an orchestrator node, and in the um, bare transcoding node. So they act together, and they can also outsource the outputs of these encodings now onto a network storage that could be S3, for example. Like any type of storage in the future should be supported by that type of system. Mm -hmm. And um, we are looking for design partners who help us find the odds and test this in the real world environment. So um, basically, a new startup building prototypes around live streaming, and you would pretty much perfectly fitting in there. Hmm. OK. So maybe maybe people could also run a specific node um, instead of just running a transcoder as well. Um, yeah, so you mean the broadcaster? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I think the broadcaster has the option of either run the node for themselves, or they they like use someone el someone else's node, right? So if you're exactly. if you truly want to have your own agency and be quote unquote be decentralized, then you would want to run your own node. Just like you know, if you truly want to be decentralized for Ethereum, you want to run your own Geth and then just like issue <laughs> transactions to your own Geth node. Um, or or yeah, or or if you if you want. Um, you know, if you want convenience, you'll probably just use uh, MetaMask um, and, c and connect to, to someone else's hosted Ethereum nodes. Um, similarly here, the, th the only thing is that if you run your own broadcast node, then you will also be responsible for um, connecting it to a CDN if you want to like distribute it to many people. Um, so that, so that, would, that would be the technical challenge for that. Yeah. I, I think it makes sense, though, to keep Detalk as lightweight as possible, though, you know, so that people can, um, so, so it may, keeps that censorship resistance concept. And then it, they could run, like you said, they could run it through their own CDN, or they could plug into the existing um, live peer system you were describing. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely, yeah, leaving it, leaving it open. So the big missing part here is and most likely the client side needs to also become the broadcast node without yeah. the requirement that the content before it's getting streamed to a transcoder is being signed otherwise you never know if the content the transcoder sends back is really the, uh, the correct content and um, this is something that we currently yeah we're missing that basically yeah correct I, I think that's that was my point about uh, you could also run a broadcaster node and also have a staking mechanism inside inside the second node that to make sure that the content that is being sent is actually the correct content, and then you could actually have this signing mechanism as well on the top of it, just to guarantee that the content is the correct one. Correct, and the challenge here is that this has somehow to run headless in a user system, right? Like a uh, like JavaScript in a web browser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have, so we we have that in mind, but it's a really heavy task from a reliability perspective, from a resource allocation perspective. We ask the web browser then a lot, right? It should receive a, a bit stream from a local encoder and package it and sign it and connect to our network and interact with it. Um, and that's all next to the payment. But it's definitely, it's definitely something we are considering. And it might, yeah, it might be worth that we sit together and talk about it. Definitely. Is, is that something you definitely want to run in the web browser? Is that kind of the objective with it? 
the thing is, how do you make all type of end user devices compatible to this without going to you know build SDKs for each individual provider and building native um, then native apps uh, above, um, above this? Because you want you know if 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 you put the burden on how to use this too high, for example, with streaming, Flash died because nobody wanted to install a plugin anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And I see, I see it similar to you know how a user would then interact with such a network. If he has to install something, if he has to choose a specific operating system that only, you know, that the only one that's supported, for example, this can't fly. And the only thing that could potentially fly is a virtualization like JavaScript that's available across platform and it's just like limited, right? Yes. I mean, with WebRTC, we have all type of cool new ways how we could connect to web browsers. Um, so the, the path for doing this is there. And with tools like Inscripten, we could potentially even port our broadcast node and the part of um, libav that we're using to a web browser. And packaging is not so heavy as transcoding is, so it could potentially also work in the virtualized environment. But it's a lot of ifs in there, and um, the yeah. So for it's for a, it's a long term goal for us. The vision was there from the beginning, but it's one of the toughest jobs to get this run properly, especially for live streaming. VOD wouldn't be that hard, but for live streaming, it's much harder, mm -hmm. as everything is real time. It has to be real time efficient. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but in the short term, you know, like, are, are you guys thinking about um, putting this up on a, um, like, like making this usable for for some events that are coming up? Like, yeah, we. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Ricardo, the the person that was uh, live, um, the live music um, stuff that we we add in in Cape Town. So he's actually going on a tour in Europe, and and he, he asked us. If, if he could uh, use it to live stream and people could actually uh, watch his, his performance in live. And the, the, the vision that he has, he doesn't want people to be called. He doesn't have like any stuff on Spotify or whatsoever. He wants to people to experience the live show. And so he thought about like the blockchain and the live, live peer uh, kind of, of, of way of live streaming and not being able to, I mean, he doesn't want to save the, the data somewhere. And, and it, he saw that this could be a very good, uh, a very great uh, a tool for him, and so we want to actually try that uh, that uh, detox in a, in a street, and then uh, trying to make the live performance and people being able to tweet worldwide. I mean, uh, tip. So yeah, we're planning to actually do it in Europe. Uh, so that'll be like in Berlin, in a couple of weeks. He's in the south of Italy. Cool. So. <laughs> So, thanks, for the, thanks for the technical uh, deep dive and some of the discussion around um, applications. Does anyone who didn't get a chance to chime in and ask questions have anything they wanted to ask or comment on as it relates to detox? I just want to say awesome job, guys. This is really awesome. Uh, I'm I'm so excited to to see this live and and see it being used and seeing the musicians being paid. This is great. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, thanks. There's a ton of people who have shown up to Live Peers community um, for this, you know, specific uh, philosophy and mission. And it's always been a there's always been a little bit of a disconnect because we're building this infrastructure layer, and until applications like Detox emerge, we don't have the great outlet for them to start streaming, to start earning for their creative content and output. Um, we always say someone needs to build that um, in kind of the Web3 world that puts economics directly into the application for the, the streamers. And so now that we kind of have this really early uh, beginning of Detox, and I mean, it's so impressed with how much you accomplished in one weekend um, that's already functional and, and working, really excited that we can point people towards it and build a community around it and uh, you know, see what it becomes. Cool, yeah, awesome. Awesome, yeah. Awesome. Great. Um, cool, so that was the main uh, focus of today's 
community call. Did anyone else have any topics they wanted to um, ask about or discuss or, or bring up on this week's call? Yep. Nope. So, all right. So we'll be back again in uh, two weeks. And if people have ideas for topics, feel free to share them in the Discord chat um, email. And uh, look forward to talking to everyone soon. We'll record this recorded, and we'll upload it um, for sharing with the community later. Thanks so much, everyone. Cool. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you all. Bye. 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 Awesome presentation. Thanks, guys.